Are you sure she's well enough to go? She's got a temperature. She's OK. Unless you don't think I should take her. No, it's fine. Whatever you think. Is your towel, superstar? Here we go. Come on. Bye, Dad. See you later. I might be out by the time you get back. You've been away all week. I thought you had a couple of days off. It's just footy, Joe. <sighs> OK, we'll make sure Hal has his tea before you go out. Am I losing you? What are you talking about, Ryan? <gasps> Come in, sweetheart. Pick a number. Uh, 139. No, pick a number between one and five. OK, um, four. Right. It's two hours away. You got a hot tub, sauna. I can book it. Just give us some space. To talk. What is it? What's it done now? can tell me it's all right. I, I can't. We can't do this every week. Why not? Who we hurt it? But you need someone, and he's hardly ever there. That's the job, that's not him. Yeah, but he barely communicates when he is there, you said it yourself. <sighs> if you're happy and content or whatever, then why are you here? We both need this. Someone to talk to. A bit of kindness. We should be talking to the people we married. <sighs> Supposed to be picking up a birthday present for Amy tonight. Big surprise. I spent way too much on it because I feel guilty as hell. I don't want to feel like that anymore. That's why we have to stop. Ten more minutes, OK? Don't want you waiting up till your dad comes home from footy. Al. I don't have to be physically looking at you to hear you. When you said you were no good at science. Uh-huh. Ryan, I can't get to the phone right now, so leave a message. Thanks. Hi, it's me. Listen, I was thinking, why don't you phone your mum and see if we can go out and see her? Um, she could babysit and we could spend some time together. You were right, I, uh... I want us to make more of an effort. Be nicer to each other. Love you.
Professional swimmers don't eat cereal. Too much fibre. Is that true, Mum? Stop winding your sister up. <laughs> Lee? Hello. Hi, darling, it's Joe. Look, I know I'm being silly, but you haven't heard from Brian this morning, have you? No, I didn't realise he's back from London. Do you want me to ask the lads? Yeah, would you? Thanks, babe. It's just we're supposed to be having the day off together today. How? Go and get Jeff, please. Look, he'll show up. He's probably just crashed on someone's couch or something. I'll call you later, all right? I understand you, sir. I do. If people don't trust the police force... My police force? then they lose faith in the law and justice. Well, that's what I'm saying. We used to trust the Bobby on the beat, but not anymore. Sir, since I became Chief Constable, complaints from the public are down by 65%. And those that are reported are actively... For Vicky, as your family liaison officer, I thought you would want somebody that you know. No, there's only a handful of people that know that Ryan's dead. And we'd like to keep it that way, for now. I don't understand. Ryan was working on an operation for the last three years. And we're just bringing it to a close. No, that can't, that can't be right. He was in London three days a week training CID officers. It's not what he was doing, Joe. He was working undercover. He was asked to keep it very tight. No one knew. anything you want, you just say okay. I'm right here, I'm not going anywhere. Hey, Bon. No, I'm still with you, all right, so just handle it. Right, I'm on my way. Joe, I need you to keep this to yourself at least until tomorrow, and then it will all be over, I promise you. I have to tell the kids. Uh, you think it's probably best you don't, just for now? No, we can't have Hal posting something or messaging one of his mates or whatever. We just can't risk it. And I'm so sorry, Joe, that it has to be like this. Because we would all like to be able to grieve for Ryan. Believe me, I swear to you, tomorrow this will all make sense and you'll be proud of what Ryan's done and so will the kids. You're supposed to have the day off. Morning, Mom. Morning, Chief Constable. Sokol's found a 9mm shell case at the scene. It matches the bullet that was found in uh, Ryan's body. He must have been attacked or in a fight. His nose had been bleeding. There were signs of a struggle. Sorry, Gov. I've just got a call. DC Clark, take a seat, please. Where is it? Just sit down. Jesus. Take a moment. There's no CCTV at the warehouse, no traffic cameras close by. His car was parked three streets over. He, he must have come the rest of the way on foot, but there's fresh tire tracks on the bridge. Where's everyone else, sir? There'll be more of us, but for the next few hours, we keep everything tight. DCS Hepburn has asked us just to work with the forensics for now. Look, if there's no camera footage, then we should be out there now. Something's going down, a big operation. We're hands off until DCS Hepburn gives us the all clear. What, meanwhile, everything just goes cold? A police officer is dead, sir. A friend. 
We can't just sit on our hands. I'm not asking you to. You'll get a run at this. But we've got to keep a low profile for the next few hours. We work the murder scene and forensics and await further instructions. Look, I haven't been at this station long, so I never worked with him, but I know a lot of you knew Gillespie as a friend. But you've got to keep the emotion out of this. Has anyone spoken to the family? His wife's Joe Gillespie. Who's that? She's a PC, sir. She's one of us. supposed to be at football. What was he doing? Can you take me to where you found him? Joe, I can't. Let's get you home. Please. I rang him at 22.11, I left a message. I'd like to know if he heard it. Go home, Joe, please. I don't want you seeing this place. I need to see it. Please let me in. No, you don't. You need to go home. OK, Joe? Listen to me. <sighs> no, Joe. Joe! Oh. Joe! Joe! You can't go in there. always lets me order. Bells, bells! Are you saying we're having pizza? Then I'm not budging. <laughs> Joe! Sorry I got held up. I told you, I can make my own way home. It's two buses, that's all. I don't want you doing that. Your dad knows the arrangements. Where is Ryan, anyway? You should have texted. Everything all right with you? Yeah, fine. It's just, uh, I hate being late. Come on, Hal, say goodbye. Come on, Where's Dad? Something's happened, hasn't it? He didn't say a word in the car the whole way home. What is it? A car. Mum? Is your dad? Is he hurt? He's gone. What?
you tell Mum? Oh, not yet. I wasn't even supposed to tell you, but as soon as they say we can, we'll call her. Okay. Stay home until I fall asleep. She's right here now. It's um, DCS at the... I told the kids I had to. No, look, I, I don't blame you, and it's all right now, because we've got them. We made seven arrests, Joe, at a wedding. They were all here. Well, who... Who are they? They're a gang that have been running guns across the entire northeast. We've been chasing this for years. Is that what Ryan was working on? Joe. We couldn't have got them without him. Did one of the men that you arrest kill Ryan? We'll find out. I'm going to free up every single officer I've got. Whoever it was, we'll get them. You take care. Do you want me to call Ryan's mum? No, thanks. I can do it. Any idea what Ryan Gillespie was doing at that warehouse on his day off? We don't know yet. But you've seen his handler's notes? They're patchy. In the last week. There was a breakdown in communication with Ryan. I really hope I haven't got anything to be worried about here. Ryan was one of the best deep swimmers I've ever had, Mum. I'm sure that whatever he was doing at that warehouse, it was all about working toward those arrests. Let's hope so. If he put a foot wrong undercover, this case won't even get to court. Athletes don't eat cereal. I don't understand. I thought he was supposed to be in London training officers. So did I. Surely they've got to tell you what happened. You're his wife. D.S. Ryan Gillespie was found dead in a derelict warehouse in the early hours of Tuesday morning. Not an officer in this station that doesn't know that by now. What you don't know is that he was working undercover to catch the seven men we just arrested. Now, that fact never leaves this room. 
Not until we can be sure his conduct will stand up in court. I want it understood that you are free to run at this with everything we've got. However, it's essential that we remain discreet. Did he have a handler he was reporting back to? Everything that DCS Hepburn considers relevant to this murder inquiry will be passed on to DCI Kapoor. We need to find out everything we can about Ryan Gillespie. Come in if you like. I'd better take this. Hi. You are right. Good. Just, just wondered how you were doing. And the kids. Okay. So what's happening with the case? Have they put more officers on it? Well, it's probably best you don't ask me too much, you know. What does that mean? It just needs to be done right. You know, his wife, I can't just... Joe, I'm sorry, I... I only called to see if you needed anything. Can I see you? No, you're right. It's probably best we stay out of each other's way for a while. He'll be right out. He uh, left some stuff last time he was here. We need to talk about what happens to him now. We don't have to discuss this here. But we're not discussing it. Look, Joe, I lost him before. You gave him up? I wasn't in a good place when me and Ryan split. I thought Hal needed something more than just me. I've got Nigel. I can offer him a home now. He's already got a home. Melly needs him. We're a family. He's my son, and you're not his mother. I want him with me. Don't you think we should let Hal say what he wants? We've got to be fair to him. It's funny hearing that word coming out of your mouth. Tell me, how fair was it sleeping with my husband behind my back? I never did that. And now you get to play the grief-stricken wife. I oh, just remember, I knew Ryan a damn sight longer than you, Joe. I really knew him. I'm ready now. It's your decision, OK? Where you live. Whatever you want, I'll support that, OK? Going to find the bad person who killed him and make sure he never does it again. I promise, Dad. Dad's friends will make sure of it, Mel. You just wait, yeah? Sorry, Joe. I need to come in. Jack, what's going on? It was part of a special operation, working undercover. Yeah, I know that. He used to feed back to his animal once a week, then he just stopped. We don't know much about his movements the past few days before he died. No. You know how it works, Joe. Ryan wasn't doing a nine to five. We're just trying to build a picture of someone whose job it was to keep his activities a secret. What was he doing at the warehouse? I mean, did he go by a different name? Do you know what it was? Don't ask me questions I can't answer. Can't or won't. Just leave his things alone, please. I 
didn't know he was taking them. Jack, please just put them back. I don't want the kids knowing about them. Joe, I know this is brutal, but I have to take these. You know that. I don't understand why they took all Dad's stuff. It's only bills and shit. Don't worry about it. Was he good? What do you mean? Dad, was he a good person? Of course he was. Then why is nobody saying it? Yeah, well, next time, you should get your bloody facts straight. My son was a hero. The hours he worked, the things he did for this police force, and you can't even be bothered to print a bloody photograph. What are you doing? He was working on a big operation when he was killed. Barbara, put the Undercover. phone... Undercover. And there isn't even a statement from the chief constable on this. Barbara, put the phone down. He should be on the front cover of that arsewipe of the paper of yours, and you should be grateful for it. <sighs> he told you he was working undercover. Hal heard you and Jack talking. Nobody's supposed to know. What are you doing calling a journalist? I'm helping your daughter understand who her father was. She's confused and she's angry. And so should you be. My boy wasn't killed crossing the road, Joe. He died doing his job and I want people to know. I just don't understand. Why aren't people asking questions? They will. Yes, when? That should be all you care about now, Joe. Who killed him? That's what those kids need to know. So they can make sense of all this. That's a, that's a kid called Michael Parry. He was part of the gang, but he wasn't there when they made the arrest. We're looking for him. And who's that? Parry's girlfriend, Sean Glover. We think they might be on the run together. But where is everybody? They're down the pub. They're, they're having a quick one. For Ryan. <sighs> Oh, sorry. It's good to see you, Joe. Well, we charged all seven of them. And I'm not getting bailed, Joe. We're all in custody. And Ryan made that happen. What are you doing then? What are you all doing in here then? Why aren't you trying to find out who killed him? Joe, not yet. No, it's all right. Have any of the members of the gang suspects in Ryan's murder? 
They all had alibis for the night Ryan was killed. Well, have they given you any leads about where Michael Parry is? If you've charged the gang, then they can't be questioned anymore. So if you don't have leads on Parry by now, then he's gone. I've given DCI Kapoor any information that I think might be relevant to his investigation. What you mean is Ryan served his purpose getting you those seven arrests, and now no one's interested in finding out who murdered him. Mrs. Gillespie. I'm Johan Kapoor. I'm SIO in the inquiry into Ryan's murder. The tire tracks you found, are they from outside the warehouse? That's right. Well, have you been able to identify the vehicle? We've called in the footage from every traffic camera within a three-mile radius, but the uh, warehouse is a total blind spot. So you don't even know what car you're looking for? We're pursuing a number of promising leads. Well, after you've finished your pint? You shouldn't be eating or sleeping until you found out how my husband died. None of you should. Joe, hold on. They're celebrating Ryan in there too, you know. What he did to bring that lot down. No one's saying it, but we all know. Three days a week, he had a life I knew nothing about. What am I meant to do with that? How am I even supposed to begin to understand it? Joe. Neil Cargill. That was his cover name. But I didn't tell you, okay? Ronald here, yeah? You're supposed to be asleep. September 12, 5.38 p.m. I mean, it's not like Reem slipping behind at school, but... I mean, Melly's fine, right? Do you read to Liam? My help. It's Mummy and Jack. You should turn this off. Why do you and Ryan read to Melly? He's never here to put it to bed. Melly bed. I'll switch it off. No, leave it. I want to listen. September 26, 5.15 p.m. Oh, that's too loud. Nelly's sleeping. All right, Vic. What's the matter? How's like Ryan? Don't express anything. Feeling and opinion. It's exhausting. That's why it's such a lifesaver seeing you. For me too, you know. Where did you get that? In the air and cupboard. I don't know what I'd do without this time. Together. Switch it off. I wish we had ten more minutes. Hal, I'm serious. October 3rd, 5.42 p.m. I'm going to sit Amy down. I'm not happy. I want her to know. You should do the same with Ryan. Joe? What is this? I want to. I just can't. Joe? If you don't love him anymore, then he deserves to know. Hal, please. Second, five, twenty-seven p.m. You and I need some time away from here. A weekend or whatever, just to work out, you know. Work out what? Why is this, Joe? What are we doing sitting here telling each other this stuff week after week? Because I know why I do it. I love you. Just promise me you'll think about some time away. Two of us together. Just say it. Okay. I'll think about it.
October 15, 8.50 a.m. Come on, Melly, out you get. Have a good day, sweetheart. I love you. October 16, 8.45 a.m. So what will the pleasure? Okay. I think I know what this is about. Look, you don't want to print that story. Nothing to hide, it's just baseless, and you might end up looking a bit stupid if you run a story about Ryan Gillespie at this point. What do you mean? He can't have run it already. Who's your source? Ed, listen to me. Shit! Do you reckon he must be doing a nut? So much for keeping things tight. How did Ryan Gillespie's mother know details about his undercover work? If I find out that any of you have been talking to the family about this investigation, you'll have me to answer to. Take it down. doing here? Look, I got this footage from a rowing club. They were filming a practice session the night Ryan died. I've watched it all. You're looking for a blue courser that was parked on the bridge to the warehouse. The wedge isn't visible. Well, well I'll, I'll check it out. This is good. There's something else. Someone was listening to us. What do you mean? Every Tuesday I sat out there in my car. Everything we talked about, there's hours of other stuff too. Me taking Melly to school and they were listening to Ryan too. Joe, you're not making any sense. Look, I found some CDs. They're numbered 24 to 28, which means there's probably more. There was a bug in the car. I don't know what is going on or what it means. Jesus. Be careful, OK? Joe, wait a minute. We need to talk about this. We need to tell someone. Sixteenth, eight forty five AM. 
by the end of the month. Okay, great. Um, the name is Neil Cargill and the address is Birch Cottage, Hildean Lane, Timble, LS21. Um, and the name is Neil Cargill and the address is Birch Cottage, Hildean Lane, Timble, LS21. with how Ryan's case was handled. There are still leads that need to be pursued. Are you telling me you're not starting to have doubts about what he was doing those last few months? Who he really was? Be careful. This is a horrible world, Joe. 